All it really takes is a soft pillow, a warm blanket, and the ability to give up control to your natural responses. Whether dreams are an actual doorway to another reality or merely the misfirings of neurons, we can learn a lot from the worlds we visit in our sleep. Here are three dreams from the Mandela Quantum Affected. Story 1, LL, 1990 Dream I was in junior high school when I had a dream of being huddled with my family waiting outside of some sort of storm. Looking out a window, I could see that there were two moons in the sky. Spring 2000 During this time, doctors were treating me for MS, lupus, and migraines. I was having severe panic attacks and sometimes would experience a dual reality slash timeline. I'd be working as an ophthalmologist tech examining a patient in Washington, D.C., when suddenly I would find myself standing barefoot on a southwest desert, wearing Spanish colonial clothing sometime in the late 1700s or early 1800s. I could feel the hot, dry air hitting my face and the dry, hard earth on my feet. I was talking to a Native American man who was teaching me about traveling and healing. That reality was multi-sensory to me and as real as the one in 2000. It would last for what seems like 30 minutes when I would wake back up in Washington, D.C., where the patient would tell me that I had gone silent and blacked out for two minutes, but had remained seated and didn't faint. This happened several times. August 2005. In my dream, I was hiding inside of a grain silo somewhere in the Midwest, and it felt like Iowa. In my dream, I could hear two farmers talking outside about where I was hiding. One of them was holding a newspaper. On the front page was a picture of President Hillary Clinton and a new map of America. In this new map, our country was no longer one continent, but three separate parts, with the westernmost area being mostly islands. Where the Mississippi River was, now it was the westernmost edge of the easternmost landmass. The headlines asked what our new president would do about the country now. 2007. Dreamt of being about six years old again when I was being abused. I saw myself hiding outside my home in a car when my grandmother guide figure appeared to me and showed me how I could travel in time to fix things and help my younger self avoid abuse. 2009, I dreamt of an underwater dome that housed an entire school where I was being taught about energy. 2010, while living in Washington, D.C. with no intentions of moving out west, I dreamt of a Las Vegas strip. I was staying at New York, New York Casino, and I was looking out at the night skyline when a bomb or missile hit and suddenly I was out of body watching the strip blow up. 9-11-2011, 1 a.m. I woke from a dream where I saw a meteor fall during the night and it hit in front of my parents' house where I was sleeping. In my dream, I rushed out to see it hit a tree in our front yard. After an explosion of light, I saw several orbs hanging from a tree, and as I approached, I could see that each orb had a few beings inside of it. I learned that these beings were souls that had never incarnated on Earth before. I expressed concern for their well-being. They seemed to be more cerebral and not as emotional as humans. Then they took me to visit their world, which had pastel purple-colored skies, and it was very silent. The cities didn't have pollution, and everyone communicated telepathically. This planet didn't have green trees and it was colder. Their cities reminded me of Reykjavik with colorful buildings and pristine nature that surrounds it. The following day, a friend of mine who did grid healing on historical sites told me that she had taken some pictures of trees in Shanksville site of 9-11 attacks. When I looked at them, I saw a tree with orbs hanging off of it. The picture was taken in the bright daylight hours though. 2016. I dreamt of a huge black cloud that covered the sky and hid the sun. Everyone had to wear a mask and go hide in these underground bunkers, but there wasn't space for everyone and I was separated from my partner. 2017 I dreamt that I was in a far future and I was living in a dome-covered community outpost on some planet or moon overlooking Earth. There was a station outside of the dome where I was and a long, huge bridge which connected the two. The bridge was magnetized and large vehicles moved along the bridge. I was sitting beside someone watching the vehicles move on this bridge, seeing Earth in the background, when suddenly the bridge was no longer magnetized and the vehicles began falling through space. LL Story 2 J I've been aware of the Emmy effect now for a while. Map changes are the biggest proof to me it's real. Lately though, it's been in my dreams, my dreams that seem so wrong to me. I've always had a certain style of dream that I've become used to. The only way to describe it is, like you could tell by a movie who directed it, the style, the language, the feel of it. It seems lately I'm not the director of my dreams. 
They're totally different, and I don't feel connected to them at all. I guess I'm just asking if anybody else has mentioned this to you, being that you hear from a lot of people. J. Story 3 SP I woke up this morning after having the most lucid dream I've had in a long time. I scribbled a few short notes while it was fresh in my mind. I'll try to keep it short. I was out in my car, I don't know why or what for, but I came across a turn that went to the back of a mall with two high walls on either side. I stopped as it was a dead end and there was a door, like a back door, a shop. I went through it and there was a corridor with another door at the end. I opened it and found myself inside a dental lab. I personally have very good teeth and my dentist is always saying how they're very good for my age. She must think I'm a horse. Anyway, there were lots of strange people in there. There was a teenage girl with a mutilated face crying and saying that she was not beautiful anymore. So I sat down with her and I explained that beauty has more to do with personality and that she had a very nice personality. All the time, she was looking across the lab at a beautiful woman sitting in a dental chair. As beautiful as she was, all she could do is snarl and glare at people like an angry cat. Then a student-aged boy came into the room with a state-of-the-art geeky laptop computer. He sat about trying to find online why we were all in this room. All the time, the room was filling up and emptying of nondescript people. The student suddenly shouted, I have the answer! We are all dead! Nobody seemed to react at all. Over by the door where I came in and left was another huge stainless steel polished door like a meatpacking plant fridge or a door you might see in a large city morgue. As I walked over to it, the door to the Coria door opened and three very young toddler babies were walked in. Two came at once, but one, it came last, a little girl, and she hesitated. I held up my hand and she ran to me with a smile on her face. The steel door was opened, and inside was a sloping steel mesh conveyor belt that went down to another smaller steel door. The children were placed on the conveyor, each given a small toy to play with, and the belt started moving down its slope. As the children arrived at the smaller door, it slid open in an up position, and massive orange flames shot out and engulfed them. It was so quick and so hot, the door closed. Sometime later, a dental nurse came over to me, took my hand, and led me to the large steel door. She looked me in the eyes and said, Are you really ready for this? I nodded yes. I was totally at peace, and despite what I had seen, I willingly lay on the mesh conveyor belt. It started to move. I closed my eyes and took a very deep breath. But at the last second, I had to open them out of curiosity. As I did, the other door slid up, and as my feet and legs went into the mass of orange fire, I was hurtled forward. Expecting a massive bout of pain, I clenched my good teeth together ready for anything. As I went into the fire, the flames turned a beautiful blue, and they were not hot, but very cool like a summer breeze. I felt nothing physically, but in my heart I was overwhelmed with feelings of love and peace. The blue flames turned into a brilliant white light, and suddenly, totally aware of my surroundings, I was in a large white room. I then woke up and scribbled this all down on paper. There's a lot more to this story that I've left out. Other characters all with their own flaws and tales of woe, an attempt to escape by a couple of trucker types, and other things that it would take me too long. I can remember a nurse rebuking me for trying to open a window. When I woke, I sat up, grabbed my pen and paper, and in a loud voice said, Whoa, this dream has opened questions for me as to what hell is. Was this hell? And was it as bad as religion makes it out to be? Or is that just a cover? for what really happens when we are reborn. Rather than die, maybe what people are speaking of is fire cleansing the soul for rebirth. This dream has strengthened my already strong peace about death, but I will never forget what I saw that night. Can dreams provide us with the answers to questions we can't gain access to in our current reality? Maybe they explain things too big for our perceptions in an odd way that we can understand. Whatever the case, it's an experience we all share an experience we are not alone in.